Okay, our next topic, we're going to be talking about coagulopathies part two, and we're going to be talking about liver disease, vitamin K deficiency, as well as DIC. Now, like before when we were talking about the increased PTT with a normal PT here, I'm going to be talking about an increased PT as well as an increased PTT. If we see an increased PT and an increased PTT, I want you to look at the platelets. And if the platelets are decreased, it's going to be a consumptive coagulopathy known as DIC. This is usually resulting from some type of underlying illness, usually sepsis. Um, it can also happen secondary to things such as cancer, hemolysis from transfusion reactions. It can happen secondary to serious burns. Rhabdomyolysis is a serious one that a lot of times they like asking. Um, it can happen from trauma as well as snake bites. A lot of things can cause DIC. And basically, this is usually an idiopathic disorder essentially, but the cellular destruction is going to release tissue factor and it's going to initiate a cascade that consumes these platelets. Um, occasionally, you can get thrombosis from your DIC. And one thing that's not here actually is something known as migratory thrombophlebitis which is an atypical venous thrombosis if you see a migratory thrombophlebitis this is going to be suggestive of chronic DIC okay and a migratory thrombophlebitis secondary to chronic DIC is usually going to be due to cancers and the cancers most commonly involved are lung pancreas stomach and prostate so if you see a migratory, a migratory thrombophlebitis, which is suggestive of a chronic DIC, you're going to do a CT scan of the chest, the abdomen, and the pelvis um, because you want to further evaluate this malignancy. So in DIC, you can actually get bleeding from any orifice, okay? So any of the orifices can have bleeding. And um, when the patient has any of the above with an elevation of both PT and PT, with a decrease in the platelet count, I want you to think DIC. Remember that the fibrinogen is going to be low because um, the fibrinogen is going to be consumed, okay? D-dimers and fibrin split products are going to be in, in increased amounts because all of the elements of the coagulation, uh, coagulation system are going to have been consumed, okay? Sometimes you can see signs of intravascular hemolysis with schistocytes um, being shown. So this is all going to be characteristic of DIC. And because most patients are going to present when they have DIC with severe bleeding, you're going to do fresh frozen plasma, okay? And once in a while you can use platelet transfusions, but FFP is going to be your answer for the most part. Now if you have an increase in your PT and an increase in your PTT and your platelet count is normal, it, it's going to be one of two things. It's going to be either liver disease or vitamin K deficiency. And if your platelets are normal with an increase in PT and PTT, you're going to administer vitamin K. If there's no change after the administration of vitamin K, obviously you know that there's going to be some type of severe liver disease because your vitamin K dependent factors are going to actually be normally produced in the liver. The only, um, the only clotting factors that aren't made in the liver are actually going to be factor 8 and von Willebrand's factor. But other than that, all your other clotting factors are going to be made in the liver. So if you have liver problems and, and you administer vitamin K and um, you, still have, um, you still have an increase in your PT and your PTT, it's going to be liver disease as your cause. Um, there's going to be a decreased production of your clotting factors by the liver and the bleeding can actually occur at any site. The gastrointestinal system is going to be the most common site of the bleeding and the PT is going to elevate first and it's usually going to be more severely elevated. Um, you're going to treat the underlying cause um, and basically if you have a very severe bleeding 
presenting with things such as melena, you can, you can use FFP in these patients as well. And finally, if you have an increase in your PT and your PTT, but your platelets are normal and you administer vitamin K and your PT and PTT normalize, this is gonna be vitamin K deficiency. Um, the deficiency of vitamin K is going to lead to a decrease in the production of factors 2, 7, 9, and 10. And vitamin K deficiency can be secondary to a lot of things, such as malabsorption, um, chronic pancreatitis can be a cause. Um, antibiotics can actually kill the bacteria in the colon that produce vitamin K. And dietary deficiency can also, malnutrition can also cause vitamin K deficiency. Um, both your PT and PTT are going to be elevated and basically oral vitamin K is going to be used to treat it and if it's severe bleeding you're going to add FFP. So this is going to be um, coagulopathies part 2, DIC, liver disease, and vitamin K deficiency and how to distinguish amongst them.